And I will not even read the long scripture I have for you today. I am going to read uh, the second of the 16th chapter. And I was going to read uh, from the 19th verse to the 31st verse. But I know you want to go home. But I do want to return to it. I will be preaching uh, from that this morning. Uh, the gospel reported by Luke, uh, chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. And I will be relating several scriptures here this morning. I want to talk about even if, even if, Jesus said to Mary and Martha, this is another sermon, when they told him that if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus said, show me where you laid him. And they said he's been dead for four long days. And he stinks. Dead is all over with. Jesus said, even now. Yes, sir. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today here is, even now, there is hope for all of us. Yes. All right. Even if, in this related story in St. Luke, the poor man and the bad, the rich man and the beggar, Live and the beggar died and the rich man died. And the rich man wanted some relief for himself because he ended up in hell. Not only Luke, but Matthew writes here in this, in the 19th chapter. Matthew, the book of Matthew, in the 19th chapter, and this one is the verse. For he said, what profit is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? But what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Today I want to say just two or three things that I, I will take my seat. If you would listen to this story, uh, these texts, you will notice that this story in the Bible <coughs> relates and reference to two men. One who had nothing, but he found the soul. The other one who had everything, but he lost his soul. There are three reasons why hell is here. And you don't want to go there. All right. All right. All right. In Luke 16, 19, 39, uh, Jesus talks about a rich man. Okay. Now in the other text, he named the baby. All right. But he does not name the rich man. Maybe because the man doesn't need a name, his money speaks for him. You see, during this period of time, money was equated with righteousness. The more money you had, the more hell bound you are. 
They thought if you were rich, God has blessed you and that you were closer to heaven than anyone else. Today we equate wealth with money, house, land, and property. But during this period, you were rich, you were a righteous person. Just go the day that they equate our righteousness. They equate our holiness. They equate our jubilance with our wealth. Men of us will not be righteous today. That idea stung me when I heard that they could tell a man religion for how many dollars he had. If he was not, if he was poor, he wasn't very righteous. That stung me because look at Jesus. The chief of chiefest of religion. He had his mama of the fair. Jesus I'm talking about. He had his mama of disappointment. He had his mama agony. Jesus. And then he walked out one day and said, birds have nests. Foxes have hope. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was not rich by earthly standards. So he was the holy of all. And now they tell me in this period of time that you had to be rich to be righteous. That just does not equate with Jesus. But this rich man fed sumptuously. He looked rich. He dressed rich. He walked rich. He lived rich. And there was no doubt in the mind that he was rich. There was no faking going on. He lived in a big house. In the high neighborhood. Big fence all around his house. So he was a rich man. And they thought he was a heavenly bound man. But this man in his richness did not show much compassion. Always think that people who've been experiencing things ought to have more compassion than anyone else. Yes. Yeah. When I set up a drug committee, I try to get people who are reformed to a person. All right. Even sometimes when I set up a prison ministry, I try to get somebody who has been to prison. And not that I'm trying to exalt that stuff, but if they had been there, they all understand it with that. Yeah. 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 Even before when I try to emphasize scholarship, I try to put some teachers and stuff on the scholarship committee. Why? Because they ought to know the struggle it is to go to school. That's what I try to do. I tried that the other church. And to my avail, I didn't even get off the ground with my scholarship committee. But I put the wealth on my little man. I put some cooks working in white folk house in there. I put some people who had to ride the bus every day going to work. And the scholarship started going up. Y'all know I want y'all to hear this. 
this great man who fed sumptuously the big house and the big fence, big servant, filet mignon. On the other side of the town, there was a poor man, a beggar, a homeless man, a stinking man. Now let me, when I say stinking, now I want you to understand that poorness does not equate to you. You, you get that? So I don't want to give that description and that characteristic only to poor people. But this guy was dirty. Paul! Homeless! He needed some help. He came to the rich man's house. Did not knock on his door because he figured he would not be welcome in this house. He figured he does not meet the standard to be a guest in this rich man's house. This fellow were poor homeless. And in fact, he had some running sores that wouldn't heal because he didn't have the money to buy the sad to his Y'all, y'all friends. Some of you had had money to buy your medicine with and you had to solve the pain. Come on, talk to me. The doctor writes your prescriptions and you can't go and get it filled. This man probably had some stuff he could put on those swords that would stop from running. But he didn't have the means of dollars to do this. So he came to the rich man's house. Did not seek entrance. Did not seek to disturb the man. He just sat outside the gate. Waiting and hoping that something would come by. I don't know whether you've ever been like that. Just go back 
to tell the master. When they eat all they want to eat. And if perchance, I'm taking my chance with God. If perchance, there's some food that falls off the table, on the floor. The crumbs, the crumbs. Just people go, please. And bring to me. And I'll eat the crumbs. Do you think that was asking for too much? Some of the servants have said, well, I, I'll bring you a piece of bread. I, I, I'll, I'll discard what the master said, and I'll put a piece of bread in my pocket and leave it to you. That's what the slaves do. That's what the slave did in slavery time. The slave who worked in the big house, they would eat the food out and serve the field like folks. Y'all, y'all hear me? Y'all will help somebody. They will help somebody along the way. But the servant didn't do that. The servant didn't do that. The master didn't do that. Instead of helping that poor, begging, so running man at the gate, they would not get told the master. The big master who had all kind of food. Instead of him helping the poor man, feeding him the crumb from the table, he sick the dog on Put the dog on him. Put the dog on him. The dog. Had more compassion than the man who said that. Lord have mercy. The dog, the dog had more compassion than the human being had. So the dog ran upon me. The body, the dog ran up the second. The dog ran up the spider and the spider. But when the dog got there, when the dog came and saw the man outside of the gate, yeah, the dog was raging. Yeah. They were slaughtering at the dog. Yeah. They were going to get some of this meat. Yeah. But when they came up on the man, on, they had man. some passion for him. Yes, so the dog stopped barking. Yes, the dog got a calm by the stuff. Yeah. And to the dog, so this man that have medicine to heal his running souls. Do you know what the dog did? They ran up to him and they licked the man's yes, soul. Yes, oh, I wish I had a check that could say that. Oh, I'm going out. I'm going to see that nobody has to. If you don't have compassion on me, God will let the dog have compassion on me. Oh, look what they did. And then the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. The, Bible. the poor man died. And then the rich man died. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People died. Yeah. It's not important that you die. It's when you're going after the other. Yes, oh, all of them have some money. All of them died. Yes, you, you may die with money or without money. Yeah. You may die poor, you may die rich. Yeah. I don't care, but you're going to die. And the emphasis is not on death, it's what's going to happen after death. Oh, I had somebody pray with you. I would feel good this morning. Oh, that's all right, but I'm going on. And they died. They both 
fear. The rich man died and went to hell. The poor man died. And the Bible said he was in Abraham's bosom. That means he went to heaven. Yes, Before the general re resurrection had come, the rich man looked up and saw Abraham, I saw the, rich, the poor man in Abraham's bosom living a good life. He was hot. He was free. He could move about. Good God of God. But the rich man was down there in trouble. Yes, he was hot. Yes, <laughs> Turn down there. And he called Abraham and said, Abraham is hot now. All right. He said, if you could just let the poor man who was not good enough sit at my table, right. who hand was not washed, but now he wants to go and dip his finger in some water and come down there and touch my tomb. All right. Yesterday. 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 The poor man wants some crumbs, some bread. But today the rich man wants some water. You gotta be tired. You got to be careful how you treat them. Yes, yes, it is bad, but it's bad water. Bad water. Let me go on, Paul. You ain't gonna save me. I'm tired of preaching to myself. Why you don't want to go here? It's because. You can never forget him. It's ingrained in your mind. You can never forget it. You will always think about the bad choices that you made when you live here. You will always think about the sentences that you showed. You always think about the lack of concern that you did for other people. Lack of empathy and sympathy. And the moral rebellion that you give against the Holy God. Then the second thing, you can never leave. I get tired of one place, I, I go get tired of one room, I go to another room. All right, man. But you can never leave. You can't take a full of full of it. You take you can't take a vacation. You can't say I'm tired of these children, I'm going to the movies. <laughs> If you get there, you're going to be there. Then he looked up. And, and they said to him, you, there's a gulf between heaven and here. And they never come together. People can't leave heaven even on a rescue mission. For the rich man said, I got five brothers. Please go and tell them not to come in. <laughs> said, go, go and tell them not to come. The prophet said to them, Abraham said to them, they won't repent. He said, yes, they will. If somebody from here go down there and tell them on earth to change their life, they won't repent. He said, no, they won't repent. But they had Moses. The other part. And they had Moses. Today is your day to repent. Don't wait for a new prophet. The prophet is already coming. Don't wait for a new message. The message is already here. If they will not, did not hear the old prophet, what you make they think going to hear somebody here. Even if they come back from the dead, we won't believe. And they said to him, even if they go now, 
they will not believe. The rich man died in the hell. Yeah. My friends, you know I don't care what happens. There is no release from here. Good evening. I'm Pastor James E. Palmer of the University of Memorial Baptist Church. I do hope you've been inspired by the message this evening. We want you to come and share with us here at the University of Memorial Baptist Church. Until then, may God grant all your endeavors today, tomorrow, and forever. Good evening.